proposition 12, we're going to do something similar to the previous proposition. Instead, what we're going to do is build a perpendicular straight line from an infinite straight line and a given point, as opposed to a point on the straight line. So to a given infinite straight line from a given point, which is not on it, to draw a perpendicular straight line. Let AB be the given infinite straight line and C the given point, which is not on it. So let's draw those two out. Nothing special about AB. And Euclid says AB is infinite, so this actually goes uh, indefinitely in both directions. So here's A, here's B, just for labeling. And let's say C is over here. Again, nothing special about that. Thus, it is required to draw to the given infinite straight line AB from the given point C, which is not on it, a perpendicular straight line. For let a point D be taken at random on the other side of the straight line AB. So nothing special about D either. We'll just pick that point D right there. And what do we do next? And with a center C and distance CD, let the circle EFG be described. Okay, so we have our center C. Place the center of our compass right there at C. And our radius will be CD. So we'll sweep out that circle. And for labeling purposes, we're going to call this intersection over here E. Call this one G. And the circle F, just for labeling. Now let the straight line EG be bisected at H, which you can recall. We can bisect a straight line by proposition 10. So we're going to bisect this line EG at H. And so you can go through the full construction, but let's say the bisection point is right there at H. And now let the straight lines CG, CH, and CE be joined. So we'll draw all those in. We have CG there to there. CH, that's here to here. And CE. That completes the construction. Now we're going to prove that these angles here and here are right angles. Euclid says, I say that CH has been drawn perpendicular to the given infinite straight line AB. So here's CH that he claims has been drawn perpendicularly to the infinite straight line AB from the given point C, which is not on it. That's obvious that it emanates from C. For since GH is equal to HE, let's see why that's true. He says that GH is equal to HE. Why is that true? Remember, H bisects EG, which we did through proposition 10. HC is in common. So you can already see we're going to make yet another inference about equal triangles. The two sides GH and HC are equal to the two sides EH and HC respectively. We covered that. And the base CG is equal to the base CE. So where's CG? That's over here. He's saying that CG is equal to the base CE, which is over there. Why is that true? Notice these are both radii of the same circle. G and E are both points on the circumference of the circle. Therefore, the angle CHG, CHG, he says that must be equal to the angle EHC. EHC, these two must be equal. Why is that? Why can we make that inference? If you have a look at these two triangles, notice once again we have the side, side, side relationship, and therefore we can infer that these two angles are equal. As he says, but when a straight line set up on a straight line makes the adjacent angles equal to one another, each of the equal angles is right, and the straight line standing on the other is called a perpendicular to that on which it stands. So we have our two right angles here, and the straight line, which comes up like so, is by definition a perpendicular line. Therefore, CH, that's this perpendicular here, 
has been drawn perpendicular to the given infinite straight line AB from the given point C, which is indeed not on it.